G'day guys and welcome to Medieval Mayhem on this channel. You'll find lots of videos into the whole medieval period. You'll find reviews into other people's gear. You'll find crafting videos into making your own costumes. You'll find DIY videos into making your own furniture. You'll find how-to videos into all sorts of medieval camping and that kind of thing. We do videos for, we analyze historical events, what happened, who were the key players, and why did things turn out the way that they did. So if medieval is your thing, this is the channel for you and you might want to consider subscribing. G'day guys, in today's video we're going to make a round shield for medieval type reenactment. Round shields were used right into the classical period by the Romans and the Greeks, and right through, right up into uh, the Tudor period really, becoming smaller and smaller. Um, in, what was known as a buckler shield. Today, however, we're making a shield for modern reenactment purposes. The Vikings, we know, typically preferred a flat shield. The Anglo Saxons preferred a lenticular shield or the domed shield. That's, I say, preferred, but there would have been regional uh, variations depending on how individuals fought and how individuals, like, like what their preferences were. Alrighty, guys, let's take a look. Uh, alrighty, so we have our piece of plywood and this is just a scrap piece of ply I had from a different project so it's not really increasing my cost at the moment. Alrighty, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a circle. Shields, round shields like this tended to be anything from about 30 centimeters in diameter to 120. The smallest being what we would commonly know today as a buckler. The largest it being a uh, probably more ceremonial type shield during the Dark Ages. I think a 120 centimeter shield would be way too big and cumbersome to actually really truly fight around. My personal preference is a shield of about 80 centimeters uh, in diameter. So that's what we're gonna do now. Uh, I guess you could do your circle or make your circle in a bunch of different ways. You could uh, use an existing shield, I guess. You could um, use a compass. Uh, I'm just simply going to use a pen and a ruler, uh, sorry, a pencil and a ruler. Remember I said I wanted 80 centimeters. So, the way that I'm finding that, half of 80 is 40, so that's our diameter. And I'm just going to work my shield, work my ruler around. And create a, um, a circle. You could also tie a, um, a pencil onto a piece of string, which you then nail into the um, into the wood itself. There's a lot of different ways you can do this. This is just um, something that's going to work for me. Now I'm just going to use a black marker pen to mark out my circle. Now I'm going to use a small battery powered jigsaw to do the cutting work. So we now have our shield blank. Now what we're going to do is we cover it with a white PVA glue. This is actually very similar to what would have happened uh, in medieval times. They would have used what's called a cheese glue. Uh, so a white glue essentially made from cheese. You need to use a fairly liberal coating. You want to get a good even coverage. Now 
I just use my fingers. I've seen other people use, you know, sticks and whatever else. Bear in mind that anything that's on top of the surface of the shield at this point is going to stick out. So any kind of bits of plywood, sawdust, bits of dirt, grass, whatever, will come through and it can really tarnish the amount of effort you put in. As well, a really good coverage of glue is important, otherwise you're going to have um, a situation where you'll get air pockets and stuff like that, which you don't want because it looks really silly. Alrighty. Stretch out the fabric as best you can. You want a little bit of an overlap. You don't need to go crazy. I've left probably about a three to five centimetre. That's about one to two inches of overlap. Um, now I'm going to do both layers at the same time. I realise not everyone would do that. It's probably gold standard to do two layers separately and that's okay. Back in medieval times this is exactly what they would have been doing. For those of you who are interested they would have used uh, multiple layers of linen. Now some warriors are known to have used rawhide or leather. Um, interesting as to whether or not the leather applications would have been purely for ceremonial use or possibly to indicate the uh, position that person held in the army. For example they could be a, a noble or something with a decorated shield. That would make a lot of sense to me because those people may have been treated differently if they were captured and we'll talk about medieval prisoners of war in an upcoming video because it was a lot more complicated than many people might realize as I said to really giving yourself a bit of pressure to stretch out the fabric. You could just use some very simple clamps to hold the fabric in place. I'm just using what we call bulldog clips or fold back clips. Ignore the fact that this is a yellow coloured fabric. We're going to paint over it reasonably shortly. As the fabric dries and obviously becomes stiffer because of the, the glue, um, it will potentially wrinkle a bit. I don't want that to happen. So trying my best to uh, keep the fabric as tight as possible. Alrighty, I'm going to leave that to dry for an hour or so. Then we'll come back and get on to the next stage. Alrighty, it is now the next morning. Uh, this is dried off pretty well. Some of the glue is still a bit um, curing, that's fine. But there's no evidence of any kind of bubbles. There's no, like, lots of stuff underneath the fabric or anything. It's come out really well. And this is exactly what you're looking for. All right, so we're just gonna... We talked yesterday about just dropping another piece of fabric on underneath, and we'll do that now. Alrighty, this is uh, drying off really well. I'm now going to cut out my section for the boss.
Uh, now we have the boss in position. I'm just going to put the handle in place. I'm just using a very simple 42 millimeter by 19 piece of pine. I have routed down. <laughs> Righto, the round shield now is, is basically finished. I'm just going to put some paint on it. I use a, a uh, well this is actually an oil based enamel. Um, it works really well, it's not very expensive uh, considering how expensive a lot of paints are these days. I usually put uh, two coats of paint on, for those of you who might be interested. These, these shields do not last forever. Um, they should last for a, a pretty long time, but they're not going to last forever and they're not really designed to, I don't think. Great to have, it depends on what you're making it for, I suppose, if you're just making it as a decoration to put on your wall, you know, if you're a fan of one of the TV shows or whatever, then, uh, then they probably could last for a long time. But um, mine get used for combat. And uh, they won't last forever, and that's okay. That's what they're designed for. If I get, uh, you know, three or four years of use out of one of these shields, I'll be very happy. Deciding to uh, use a green here as something a bit different. wanting to differentiate the people who will be using these shields. That basically is the round shield complete. Now all I need to do is put the rawhide around the edges. Uh, when it comes to rawhide around the edges of a shield, that's very historically accurate. And the reason they did that is it stopped the weapons like axes and swords from splintering the shield. The cheapest and most effective way i found of getting hold of bulk rawhide is to get hold of one of uh, these dog chews. Now, I've had this soaking for a couple of hours. They come apart very easily. There we go. And all you do is you... I don't need any of that. That can go to my dog. I'm really just interested in the longer pieces. They cost a couple of dollars from, you know, uh, in, in Australia we have the reject shop, two dollar shops, pet stores, a lot of that kind of stuff. Uh, all sells the same kind of thing and um, they don't cost too much money. Uh, alrighty, we're now going to start putting the rawhide around the edges. So I use a four millimeter, that's about a sixth of an inch drill bit. And I'll just keep punching holes around the, uh, the diameter, or the, around the circumference, sorry, of the shield. I like to fold the, uh, the rawhide roughly in half. Um, I start with a small knot, just roll it down your finger a couple of times, and then should come up with a small small stopper knot, that's all you need. Um, and I basically sew what is essentially a running back stitch. So it's a continuous stitch, two stitches forwards, one backwards, and it gives me a really good appearance. I like hand stitching my shields, I make a lot of shields. Um, we are doing an 11th century production soon and uh, so I think we're making about 60 kite shields and 
know, about 80 round shields. All right, I should mention, this is gonna take about a day and a half or so to cure from this point. So um, just bear that in mind when it comes around to using it. It's not something you can just, you know, Alrighty, all finished, all done. This shield has come out really, really, really well. I'm very, very happy with it. It's a very simple product to make. For those of you who are fairly new to reenactment, this is a great project to do. Fairly inexpensive. We start with the um, plywood. It would have cost around about 15 or so dollars. Uh, the fabric, roughly speaking, two and a half meters of, uh, will cost you around about 15 to 20 dollars. I used a coarse linen. Some people prefer cotton, some people prefer canvas, some people prefer rawhide. It's very expensive and, and difficult to get at the moment, rawhide. So uh, I, I just simply went with the coarse linen, which is fairly historically uh, accurate. Uh, the white glue, uh, obviously painted as well. Now I'm using a modern paint, I realize that. Uh, um, but, but there we go. Uh, rawhide edging, which I think is very important and, and very realistic, hand stitched, I think uh, makes it look so much better as well. Alrighty guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Please like, subscribe and share. I'll catch you in my next video.